Last week I had a chance to catch up with Tim Fulton. He's the head coach of the Cave Spring Knights. Knights were headed into Ernie Hicks Field to match up with the Blue Tornado of Ridgelands, coached by Greg Mantz. A lot of people probably thought it would be Cave Spring's last game. However, Sam Wright said, not so fast, my friend. Over 300 yards on the ground gave Cave Spring a victory, and they moved on. Tim Fulton discussed Ridgelands headed into that game and reviewed Martinsville. Hopefully we get Coach Fulton on the podcast this week as Cave Spring hosts a state semifinal in Roanoke where they take on the Brookville Bees and Jeff Woody squad. 1 p.m. Saturday is the kickoff. Winner gets to play in Lynchburg the week after against either James Monroe or Kettle Run. Here's Tim Fulton talking about the Ridgelands game to preview it from last week on the Sports Buffet podcast. Tim Fulton, head coach of the Cave Spring Knights, always thankful to be practicing on Thanksgiving because that means you're still playing football. And uh, Coach, let's talk real quick about recent events, uh, a big win over Martinsville. What worried you about the Bulldogs coming into uh, last week's game? Well, first let me say thank you, and you're exactly right. Uh, practicing on Thanksgiving is... Uh, is a privilege, and that's what we talk about. And have a lot of fun practicing on Thanksgiving morning with a breakfast with our football family, and then get to go be with our family. So, um, I tell you what, what worried us about Martinsville uh, was seeing them for the second time. Uh, we knew what they, how fast they were. Um, we wanted to make sure our, that our players were, were focused in on. Uh, doing their jobs and completing the task. And I think that was really the biggest worry we had going into that ball game. You know, would you have rather played a team that you had not, were you, that you were not going to be playing for the second time? I would have, but I, maybe that's just my inexperience. It's only the second time that we'd ever done that. Uh, happened one year when we played Graham in the regular season and then in the playoffs. And, uh, but this one had a different feel to it. And, uh, Made us a little nervous. Made me a little nervous. Um, so, yes, at that time, personally, I'd have rather played a, a different team. Talk about what has been going right for you guys lately. I know you guys have had to battle through some injuries towards the uh, latter half of the season. Talk about uh, the resolve and the grit of your squad. Well, I tell you what, I think you're exactly right. And it, When those young men uh, were injured, and we're speaking about Reese Kingery, who played corner and quarterback for us, John Evans, who played corner and wide receiver, and then our other wide receiver and safety, uh, Jack Woody. You know, when those young men were out through the uh, middle to late part of our season there, you know, we, we talked to our players about it. It's an opportunity for these young men to step up and play. and It was really great to see how we had uh, three different young men step in, uh, and, and it make big plays. Uh, Sebastian Welford had two great pass breakups against Christiansburg to, to keep that win. And uh, Michael Chrisley started his rotation then in at safety and has done a great job there. Uh, so we were really, really happy. And, of course, Tony uh, moved in at quarterback for us, uh, played these last couple of ball games. It, it's been great to just see how our boys have come together uh, as a unit to overcome that situation. No easy one now coming up for you guys at all. The uh, Richlands Blue Tornado, Greg Mance, always has a very good squad. What worries you about the uh, Blue Tornado other than the fact, I'm assuming, that going to their place is probably not on the top of your uh, wish list for uh, the holiday season? Well, no, we certainly would much rather have played them at home. Uh, but as it turns out, you know, that just wasn't, wasn't in the cards for us. Um, going up there, you know, I've had people talk to me about, well, that gets you out of your routine. And, uh, but, you know, these, these kids that are playing in this ball game tomorrow, um, they've done this. This is exactly what we talked about. We have done this routine. This is not outside of what we have done. We were here last year, and we're doing it basically the exact same way, uh, making sure everybody is set. We're, we've, we've been to Ernie Hicks Field. I don't think there's any uh, intimidation factor there. I think it's a great field. It's a great atmosphere. You, you can't ask for a better place to play a ball game. Their fans are excited. Our fans are excited. Uh, we just we need to get up there and, and play uh, play our ball game and, and execute. What makes Richlands a tough place to play at? 
Well, I think, um, number one, their kids so believe in playing at home. Um, with everything that you see and, and hear, you know, playing at home, they definitely have it as a as a home field advantage. Of course, they're going to pack their stands. I think there's a great community atmosphere up there. Um, I think it lends to the excitement among their players. And then, of course, it's their expectations. Uh, I, you know, they have a, a school, and, and their school name matches their talent. And there's a sense of community and pride. And then when you are the opposing team and you come in, I think uh, you know there for a while. You are you when you are in the ball game, uh, you are the enemy. And they are gonna you know they're gonna play hard and get out after you. But I tell you what, I will say this: we when we have gone up there, we have been treated well um, and, and taken care of. So uh, you know it's just a great atmosphere. You know, I talk to a lot of coaches sometimes, and I think when you go into an environment where it's so electric and, uh, you know, that home, the other team, the home team is so passionate, you can also feed off that. How do you get your players to, you know, feed off their crowd, so to speak? Well, I think that's the excitement factor, and that's what we, we've been talking about, too, this week. You know, hey, we are playing in a meaningful game in late November. Thanksgiving, we get to have it together. And at this point, there are a whole bunch of teams that would love to be where we are. And we need to, to, to treasure every moment. And we owe it to ourselves to play with all the passion and energy that, that we can put forth. So that when, when it's over, you know, when we walk off that field, we know that we have poured all ourselves into it and we're successful. Uh, you know, however it turns out. If we've done that, and, and that's what we want to do, uh, and that, that allows that energy to just build all week. And so you can just, you know, whether it's your opponents or whether it's your fans, you can just feed off of it. It's just a great feeling. Before we get into their personnel, have you preached uh, to your seniors or brought up the fact of, hey, you know, this could be our last, uh, our last show if we don't play Cave Spring football? Well, you know, I tell you what, it's about this time of the year, well, and when we go into, once we knew we had the playoffs and we were in, um, we always talk about uh, different things, but I will mention to the seniors, uh, you know, you have basically 2,880 seconds of football guaranteed left to play. How are you going to use each second? You know, what are you going to do? to see if you get a chance to earn another ball game. And yeah, I, I don't mean, we don't mean that as a um, as a way to, to get the kids down. It's just as a way of, of motivation and then a way of making sure that, that they can live every second of that ball game to, to its fullest. Right, because, I mean, you know, basketball, when you get to the region final, both teams go to the state tournament, win or lose. It's just a matter of, Who's home? Who's away? Football, uh, not 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 the case. So I mean, you really got to put a lot of uh, emphasis on that regional final, in my opinion. Obviously, absolutely, you absolutely do. It's it's one of those things, and you know, well, once in my opinion, well, once postseason football play begins, uh, that's it. You know, either you finish. You know, there's at no point in time that two teams are going to advance, and it, that you're playing a game that just determines seeding. You know, everything is, is is important. And for somebody, you know, somebody's going home and somebody's going home happy. Last question before we get into the uh, personnel, the tornado, and uh, the three keys to the game. Uh, you know, single A kind of shifted their playoff uh, around to where they do a 1 through 16 now and have, you know, kind of divided the state, so to speak. Uh, do you think there need to be any changes to the uh, double A playoff format? Uh, I kind of ask that weirdly as you're still playing, so you can't be so unhappy about it. Well, you know, I think um, I, I like the district play. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing I think that, that single A is somewhat eliminated, that your district champion pretty much, you know, if you didn't have enough points, you wouldn't make it in. But I don't see. The, the district title doesn't have the same bearing as it used to with that. 
Yeah, now that, to that end, you know, in Region 4 AA, what we're looking at is obviously everybody gets a little upset about some teams with blues and records getting in, but that's just due to an imbalance in, in the number of teams in Region 4. Uh, then that, that probably needs to be corrected more than anything else. Yeah, I think, you know, and I, I hate to pick on uh, Todd Jones and Pulaski because, like we talked about, they were, you know, the best winless team in the state, I believe, when you guys mentioned them, but when you guys had them. But, you know, I think a lot of people get a bad taste when they see one and nine in the playoffs. Exactly. And, you know, you look at a one and nine team and why are they in there? I mean, and I've had this conversation with folks around our school. And it's simply just due to the imbalance of the number of, of teams that are in Region 4. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, because if you look around the state at, at all the other divisions, I think there was maybe only one or two, maybe only one team that had a losing record that was actually in. And so I think if, if we could uh, get this region level back out, that wouldn't, that wouldn't be an issue at all. And I know, you know, a lot of people have been upset in the past because, you know, seven threes or eight and twos, or heck, I remember back when I was in school, even a nine and one would miss the playoffs every now and again, and, and that's not fair either. So, I mean, good luck on pleasing, good luck on pleasing everybody, in my opinion. Yeah, so I'm with you on that because we had the exact same thing happen. Um, I can remember a ten and O team and a nine and one team made it, and then we were actually an eight and two and we didn't go. Yeah. So, absolutely, I think I don't like it. I don't like people saying it's watered down as much as we need to. Uh, level off where people are more than anything else. Personnel-wise, who pops out to you on Richlands that uh, you <laughs> need to pay attention to? Oh, goodness. Uh, well, uh, all of them. <laughs> but I tell you, they are some big, fast kids. I tell you what, uh, I, I happen to have the roster, and you know, there's just stars right here beside all these kids. Of course, you have the, the Hess kid who's the offensive and defensive lineman. He's huge. He's six foot seven, three hundred and twenty pounds. He moves well. He's D one kid. Uh, and Devin Johnson, you know, the, the running back there. They're, they're easy to see. Uh, but then you just you have other kids that may not, you know, may not be noticed. And, and so you, you, they're center. Uh, the Wade kid here. He, you know, he's. Uh, He's an all-state center, and so he's terrific. And you have to worry about him, making sure you guys can get off and try there. And then um, the McLaughlin kid, the, the tall receiver, six foot four. I mean, goodness gracious, you know, we're going to have some some issues there. We're going to have to make sure we match up. And then uh, the quarterback, Reese Strong, he's just he's a terrific athlete. Throws the ball well. Uh, does what every NFL analyst talks about, extends the play, um, does a good job with that, and then finding open receivers. I I could go on and on about these kids. Um, they're just they're an impressive group of football players. You know, I know you can control with your team what you want them to see on film from Richlands and from every you know from our talk right here and from everybody else I've talked to. There's a lot, a lot of good to see about the Blue Tornado, do you not really want to show them the best, best just for, you know, I don't want to say intimidation or afraid, but, you know, you don't want them to get, uh, I don't know, maybe don't oversight. Paint, yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want to paint a picture that they're they're unbeatable. Right. Um, you know, I think every team uh, has, has flaws, and it's up to us as coaches to find those and, and try to exploit those. And, and to coach our kids up. But at the same time, you know, your players have to know what they're going to face. Um, and they have to have a good idea of who they're competing against. You know, and I think our kids, our seniors, this is the third year in a row for us playing in this ball game uh, against Richland. And so as much as you feel like you can know each other, I feel like our kids know what they're going to face. And so we didn't have to necessarily spend as much time in the film room and, and worrying about getting them shaken up or anything like that. Right. Well, uh, before we get to the keys of the game, let me preface this question by, uh, Coach, I love you. I love you coming on. I love talking to you uh, on and off the record. But, uh, you know, I think a lot of people would say, you know, have Richland's favorite. I mean, let's just be honest. Uh, 
do you preface do you preach to your kids that you're the underdog it's us against the world type thing well I tell you what um, this goes back to the beginning of the year for us um, when we sat in our locker room and this we had this conversation on August the 1st I said boys how many people honestly think that you guys can win any football game? And and our kids are real honest, and, and they spoke up because so many people have the perception that because we lost Michael Cole and Josh Wood and Adam Anders, that there was just no talent coming behind them, and that... Um, you know, that we just weren't going to be, you know, worth much anything. And I think this group took it very personal and wanted to show everybody, hey, we belong. We are a good football team. And we've, you know, we just keep talking about that. And, you know, we just, our goal uh, as a team is, is simply to play better this week than we did last week. And, uh, if, if we can do that, then if we play better, then we've been successful. You know, no matter the outcome, if we play better this week than, than we did last week, we're successful with what we want to do and with where we want to go. Um, obviously, you know, everybody wants to play well. And, you know, our kids, I think, you know, when you look at folks not giving them a chance, you know, they can they can look at the, the Christian sport ball game and say, "Hey, nobody gave us a shot to win that one either." And this is what we did. How much do you tap into that game in terms of uh, you know big game experience for this one? Well, as a as a coach to the kids, I I haven't talked to them at all about it. Um, but they, they got it in the back of their minds, I would think. Yeah, exactly. I think they have it, and I you know that's again something that we we just want to improve. Mm-hmm. From from the Christian Bird Week to the Hidden Valley Week, we wanted to improve, and we felt like we didn't necessarily improve that week. And uh, obviously, then the results were what they were, and we did feel like we did this the following week. Uh, we talked about our kids about hey, you know, we can't change the past. All we can do is learn from it and move forward. And and hopefully, from that Christian Bird game, we did learn that we can compete. And that, that when we play as a team, that we also can be a, a fairly decent football team. Final question for you, Coach. As always, I appreciate the time. Give me a key on the offense, a key on the defense, and a key in the special teams game that gives you guys a victory on uh, Friday night. Well, I tell you, now offensively, I, I, it's the same key I think we always have, which is our ability. Um, you know, it's no secret. Pam Wright's going to carry the ball. It's going to be our offensive line play um, with their ability against some much larger opponents uh, to create some movement and create some seams. I think that's uh, so our key offensively there is going to be uh, our ability to control the line of scrimmage. Defensively, uh, it's actually two points. The, Devin Johnson runs so hard. Uh, he's such a big kid. He's six foot three, 230 pounds. We we have to gang tackle him. Uh, I said to somebody else, you know, we have to we have to get him on the ground. Uh, we can't just have one guy trying to get him down. We we've got to get multiple bodies on him. That's going to be the key there. Then with that, if we're able to do that, we're we're going to have to step up our pass defense uh, with Reese Strong's ability there to, to extend that play, like we talked about earlier. We're going to have to cover a little bit longer. Um, and maintain those matchups there. So the key there is sort of twofold. Getting Johnson on the ground, shore up our pass defense. Special teams wise, um, you know, our, our kicking game is an adventure. And I'm real happy with our punting, our punt coverage. Um, you know, field goal PATs, every time we kick it, we need to make it. And then our kickoff coverage is, uh, we did a good job last week of containing one of the better return men that, that we've seen. Um, we're going to have to do a good job this week of doing the same thing. 
Coach, best of luck against Richlands. And as always, we appreciate your time, and I look forward to the uh, next time we do it. Well, Mr. Alves, I appreciate it any time. Tim Fulton on the Sports Buffet Podcast.